All right, so the rabbits are a little bit different. We do stun them first, but again, we're not killing them that way. We're just stunning them, knocking them unconscious, and then we're gonna bleed them just like the chicken. But instead of two slices, we're just gonna use one. Again, all the, the any muscle reaction you're seeing going on is just that. We're not, the rabbit's not feeling anything. Check that again through the eye response, nothing. Um, totally unconscious, not feeling a thing. Um, these rabbits, uh, just to remind you on the chicken, the chickens were only 42 days old, so that's six weeks. They're pretty, pretty young. Usually, which are between seven and eight. Um, these rabbits are 12 weeks old. We're going to do about uh, three or four of them here, and then we'll finish up the rest of them after y'all have gone on to something else. Um, uh, bled the same way, so we stun, then bleed. Um, I do use the stun method. I have been shown by a real pro French professional the cervical dislocation method. Um, I still, it, it, when he was doing it, I ended up with a good bit of bruising on the shoulders and in the hind because you have to turn and twist and pull. Um, and with the stunning done properly right on top of the ears, uh, I didn't get any of that. So I felt like that was a better method. Um, when I do the, uh, the skinning, we just start with the base of the leg and work our way up to the foot joint. So we see the foot joint at the top, then we work around the rabbit to the back and pull down to the tail. These are 12 weeks old, so they're pretty tender. Um, all the things done. Notice I'm keeping my knife very uh, parallel to the meat. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. What you want to do is cut out through the skin so that you don't end up cutting a bunch of hair because you cut out through the skin and then the hair parts as you come out with the knife. As opposed to going in, then you're cutting hair and then you have hair all over the place. Um, so this method keeps most of the hair on the skin and very little on the meat that you have to clean up later. All right, go through here, put your fingers through below the tail, hold the tail and remove. Go around to the front, get rid of any, get rid of any reproductive organs around the front, a little bit of fat connection, and then gently pull straight down until the feet pop out the bottom right there. When that happens, switch knob, you push through with my thumb and I break the joint would be like breaking your wrist to the side like this and then we just cut the remaining tissue so if you're sawing remember that's like the chicken it's white is right if you're sawing on something it's not right so it should just glide through the joint very easily um, very uh, you know nothing nothing you're going huh, like this and so again here we got a nice smooth rounded joint on the feet uh, on the legs here uh, that won't poke through your bag predicts a nice presentation on a plate and uh, is very easy to process instead, okay? We're gonna open it up and take the liver out. There's the liver and then there's the gallbladder. Again, once you've done one animal, all, these, all the animals have mostly the same organs. So there's the gallbladder, we're gonna pinch that off. Unlike the chickens, it's very breakable. Rabbits are very unbreakable. So they're pretty stiff, so you can kind of grab them and just rip them off and call it good. Um, then I'm going to pull the bladder and the food cord and all that. Because I cut the tail off already, I should be able to pull that out again without breaking. All right, success. Pull the guts out that's just connected in one spot. Then we break through this membrane on the back. And so we'll do this one if anybody wants to reverse to see this side of things. You can pull the uh, diaphragm out, which allows me to access to the heart and to the lungs. Does that see the heart is actually still pumping there? Is that something? So it's actually pumping all the blood out of the out of the animal, and then we go ahead and cut the pelvic bone here to make sure there's not any manure or anything up inside, which is clean. Now I'm going to cut the tendons on this side, tendons on the back side, and break just like the front feet. And there we go. Um, this is going to this is going to weigh out probably I guess about two and a half to two and three quarters. Uh, most of your meat is right here in the loins and in the hams. Uh, most restaurants figure they're going to be about uh, three servings. You're going to have a ham and a loin, a ham and a loin, and then shoulders and trim for something else. Um, and uh, and that's, that's what they're going to do for it. I've mentioned chefs a lot because that's where a lot of my feedback comes from, but I do market them to um, a lot of individuals as well. It's about 50-50, and they, they sell very, very well to, uh, to homeowners individuals as well. How many of those do you do a year? Uh, right now we're doing about, I think this year I'm on pace to doing um, between 800 and 1,000 rabbits. Um, yeah, the, the, the market is not as big as poultry by any stretch, but it's a very, very uh, 
there's very, very few people eating of the pie, if you will. So the pie is small, but there's very few people wanting a piece of it. Sure. So, and you also don't have to worry the inspection. It's under the same exemption as the poultry, but even more so because you don't have a gigantic poultry industry saying, you know, get away, get away, get away. There's no rabbit industry that's going to come and harass you for it. So the rabbits are very, very um, freeing from that standpoint. Obviously, the equipment use and need and the overhead to, to do them is considerably cheaper than poultry. I mean, any skinned animal is just you know, two strings, a knife, and we're up and running. So. What kind of rabbits are these? These are... Um, there are line bred rabbits. We'll hit on that a little bit more this afternoon. I started with Californian and New Zealand, but uh, they've been line bred for about 25 years, okay. and we'll, uh, we'll hit more on breeding too. So. Yeah. But they're meat rabbits, so that's what they're headed for. <clears throat> Daniel, have you cut them how long till they're dead? Um, usually about the chicken, about two, and a half, uh, about two or three minutes, okay. usually, was when I can start. Um, I can usually run through rabbits if I'm just you know, loading and killing and, and skinning and going back and forth. Um, I can run anywhere. Um, Right about two minutes, uh, between two and three minutes per per uh, rabbit. Um, I'll talk through one more here. Um, how many a session? How many a session? Well, it, it always depends because because rabbits, I'm not calling up a hatchery and sending a set number. I'm actually have the breeding stock. Uh, it varies. I mean, like last week we did 22. Um, this week we have coming up about uh, I think about 30, and then the week after we have like 10. So it just varies on how the rabbits have you know bred and kindled and and birth and everything. So it's a little bit more um, undulating as opposed to the chickens. You know, you buy 500 and you butcher 450 and that's that. Save the skin? The skins right now, I do toss. That's a great question. I do compost, which we're heading to next. But um, there is very, very little market for wholesale hides. Um, virtually doesn't pay, from what I've seen, doesn't pay for your time to salt them and stretch them and then mail them off to somebody to, to do. Certainly, they're a great value and, and in the winter they would be excellent for um, we always say there's there's always more refinement so there's a great stackable opportunity for someone else uh, on this operation I'm, I'm making good money on just the rabbit meat but there's certainly a great opportunity for value adding um, the hides as well um, but at this point I do just compost them 